I'm Brad Exum with Fast Fuel Systems, and here lately we've been hit by the EPA. Shops are out there panicking because we can't take off the EGRs and DPFs. Fast has been known for building high quality fuel pumps now with our signature series lasting well over a million miles. You've been seeing the videos on water separation and you can see the direction that we're going because removing air, removing water, removing dirt, and no one beats us in any of these now, increases the life of your fuel injection system. But one of the things that I've been doing over many years in this industry is removing air out of fuel. And we've been working in underground mines. We've done that in the past. The, the automotive market took off with, you know, with the fuel system. But in the past, we were building this to help horsepower and fuel mileage, okay? With that being done, we also noticed that on 3406B model cats, 3406C model cats, the E model cats, when you didn't have the DPF on there, you could see that actually by taking the air out of the fuel, it would reduce the opacity. That's the amount of soot going out the exhaust. So we've been getting reports from some of our semi guys that it seems like it's by taking the, the air out of the fuel, putting the fast system on, it seems that the, the constant denominator, what we're getting reported back to us, is that it's cutting regions in about half, which makes sense that if you go back to where we used to be able to see the exhaust is being cut down, it's cutting that down because there's less soot being filtered out in your DPF. Well, in the past, when we were doing some of these underground mines and open pit mines, we went to uh, down in uh, Tennessee, different areas, we did the opacity testing. In some situations, we cut it from 57% opacity down to 13.4%. Okay, that's a dramatic in, uh, uh, drop. That was on mechanical engines. Some of them were on Huey engines. That's with the unit injector. But we, we've been dropping the opacity. Now with this coming up, where we can't take that stuff off anymore, now we're gonna have to learn, uh, leave it on and learn how to tune with it. Well, FAST has a lot to do with the tuning because air simply delays your injection timing. So uh, let's say you have your injector here and your piston's here, it's supposed to fire here. I know we're talking about degrees up in here that we can't see with the naked eye, but let's say that uh, it's supposed to fire here, but it moves up here. You have less time for, for that fuel to atomize across the piston and you have less time for it to burn. So you burn less of that fuel, so you put no more soot out through the stack. When you advance your timing, and I'm exaggerating here, you give it more time for the fuel to atomize across the piston, you get a better heat, heat distribution, but you get what they call a longer burn. When you get that longer burn, you can burn more of your fuel. That's where your horsepower comes in, that's where your fuel economy comes in, because if you're burning more fuel, you don't need as much fuel, so you can cut back on the fuel. But what also happens, you get a more complete burn, you put less soot through your DPF, and that's basically, that's a filter. So if you're putting less to be filtered, it's gonna last longer. So we're gonna help out with flow that way. The other thing that, you know, we've been doing these tests, and in one situation, the engineer that was putting us up to it didn't believe that we could accomplish what I'm talking to you about now. We put it on a Deutsch engine. Uh, the one that we actually, uh, I'm talking about now is a 3406 on a 980C, model 980C. And for the first two to three hours, Everything that we was talking about lowering didn't. It went up for about two to three hours. And then for the next 20 hours, it dropped dramatically. For the next 30 and you know, the next 10 and 20 hours after that, then it plateaued and leveled off, okay? What we think was going on is it had a bunch of carbon on the piston and on the head that was burning off because the EGTs also went up for that two, the first two to three hours and then they started dropping down. And then, like I said, it dropped down for about 20 hours pretty drastically, then it started leveling off. We've done some other uh, tests where um, usually, and I'm not an expert in this area, but usually when you lower carbon monoxide or dioxide, it has a teeter-totter effect. Well, not when you remove air out of the fuel. They'll both drop. And we've had dramatic drops on here, uh, you know, up to about that 20 and 30 hours again of uh, dropping, um, and we've seen oxygen levels come up. And I don't know why that is, I'm not an expert, like I said, in this area, but we would think of having a more complete burn, the oxygen would be, more of it would be used, so the oxygen level would also come down. But it didn't, it went up in some cases of about 50 to 62 percent. And then the carbon monoxide dropped down about 69.4 percent, carbon dioxide dropped down about 17 percent, Another one dropped down, uh, uh, nitrous oxide dropped down almost 16%, and 
and uh, uh, nitrogen dioxide dropped down 20%. So we're having some nice drops. And these are on different engines. So we're going to start pursuing this more and more, but opacity is dropping. And then this one case here, you can see it in a graph form where carbon mono uh, uh, CO dropped down from 82 parts per million down to 90 parts per million. And then the um, nitrous, uh, the NO2 dropped from 80.4 down to 24.4. And again, O2, it came up from 14 to 19.9. So simply put, not only are we saving your fuel injection system by taking out the air, dirt, and water, we're also say, helping out with keeping the carbon built uh, from building up on your head and cylinder, uh, your piston and cylinder head, but we're also cutting down on the soot going through your DPF and plugging it. We're not going to eliminate DPF issues. We're going to help them out. So that's what this message is about. If you want to see more, go to fastride.com and look at our videos.